while musky giants are talking about taking people to the Mars, the moon and such and a lot of money, energy and manpower is being spent on transportation alone. The question is this, what are we going to do after we reach that particular destination and this is where this particular very important research lab, something called as microgravity lab comes in play because once you reach your destination, be it the moon, be it the Mars, there you will have to sustain life for which you will have to involve yourself in construction, be it a shelter. Once you construct a shelter for that, you will have to give protection because if it's a moon, it doesn't have an atmosphere and so like continuous bombardment of meteorites occur. So for that, you need to actually give protection and for both of this, you need to create instruments for the purpose of construction. But how will you do that? Because on space, it's zero gravity. But on Earth, we have gravity. And that's the reason in IIT Madras, they have specifically constructed the microgravity drop test lab. It's, a hu it's the fourth it largest in the world. And what happens is that they actually have a specific capsule, the one like you see over here. And this particular capsule will enter this particular place. And this is a section of that particular tower, the microgravity tower. And once you enter this tower, here you see this is the place where the research occurs. That particular tower, this uh, capsule will be connected to this tower. And if you could see through this gap in this spot, it's actually really, really tall, kind of like eight stories tall. And from there, it will be dropped. And in between this, it's a very interesting phenomenon. Even though the capsule has a free fall, the component inside kind of feels microgravity for 2.5 seconds. And that's the exact time period they get to actually go ahead and uh, do a lot of research, which is very much required after you reach your destination. Now we have various ways to reach your destination, but what will happen, but once you reach your destination, and this is the team that is going to be there. Uh, these are the ones who are actually working on, like we said, you need construction, you need protection, and uh, you also need how to create those instruments over there. And this is a team that is actually working on it. Uh, so also, here's a presentation. Thank you so much for speaking to us. May I know your name? Um, I am uh, Dr. Raditya Plateau Siddharth, postdoctoral researcher, uh, Extra Traditional Manufacturing uh, Research Center from NCCRD, IIT Madras. Thank you, Aditya. So, what exactly is a mic this uh, microgravity tower? How does it work? So, the microgravity tower, uh, what we do here is uh, welding experiment. Welding experiment. So, what we do is we un uh, we uh, assemble all the welding setup, as you see in the inner capsule, and then we put it inside the outer capsule to reduce the aerodynamic drag, and we take all the way to the top floor. From where, uh, uh, like 30.5 meters, will uh, initiate the drop, and it falls into the uh, airbag. So we get 2.5 seconds of uh, microgravity duration. So in this, uh, your team is completely called as X. TEM, which means that extraterrestrial manufacturing. So exactly what happens, can you just explain to us with this video? So here you can see uh, this uh, bottom view. Here the, you can see the capsule hanging on the top and this is the airbag, what I was talking about. And once the drop is initiated, it falls inside the airbag. So here you see 2.5 seconds of microgravity. And here you can see, initially it's hanging on the top, right? So I'm initiating the building experiment here. Once the drop initiates, you can see particles floating around due to microgravity and the last sound what you hear is the impact. So. Right. so like this is the team that is actually working on these things and uh, uh, you earlier told me that uh, when it goes to Mars, you need to actually construct something over there. So what plans do you have and what have you achieved so far in that part? So what we do is uh, presently we don't have the actual uh, Martian soil. So what we have is simulant, which replicates the uh, composition of the Martian uh, soil. So with that, what we do is we mix with certain percentage of sulfur uh, so that uh, in Mars we know we, there's no water. So how to make concrete without water is a challenge. So using sulfur, what we do is we mix it with a, regular, a, per, a certain percentage and uh, we cure it. So after curing, it becomes a, a solid uh, a concrete block. So uh, we have tested the uh, Martian concrete block and we found that uh, the strength is uh, on par with whatever uh, earth uh, concrete what we have. We have achieved up to 27 megapascal of compression strength, which is good enough. Uh, yeah. 
uh, good enough strength. Yeah. Good enough strength. Yeah. And like you said, this team is not just working on that particular event. One, like we told you earlier, certain areas in Mars or be it in Moon specifically, there is no atmosphere which, or if you're going to have some kind of construction in space, because this XTEM is actually working to manufacture in space for space and to manufacture in space for Earth. And the second part, Aditya will explain to us once again. But another important aspect that once you construct something over there, you need protection. And for which you you would have heard about like using plastic as a kind of foam. But here they are working on something entirely different. What is that actual metal foam? So, uh, so metal foam is just made up of metal instead of polymers. So we can imagine this. This is just a soap and bubble solution, uh, which is aqueous foam. But we can make. We can imagine this is made up of metal. So on Earth, what will happen is this water will drain towards the bottom due to the gravity. So imagine this is a metal and this will drain at the bottom. So this is imparting non-homogeneity to the, to the foam. So similarly to metal foams also, they, this non-homogeneity will be present. So if we manufacture these same things in space, this will not be present. It will be more homogeneous and we can use it for different applications such as you said. Uh, we can use it for protection, we can use it for lightweight application, we can even use it for thermal insulation. Because can I see any sample that you have? Yes. I'll show you a precursor which foams into a metal foam. So this is, if we heat this, this will foam into this. This is the actual metal foam that we did, that we foam. So we can construct material out of this, various materials out of this, for protection of, uh, for protection as well as various other applications. Why, why, are we, uh, why are we planning to have a metal foam instead of the present one that is being used in ISIS, kind of like sandwich between Kevlar or uh, aluminum? So this will be used in the form of sandwich materials. Currently, what we use is open cell foams, which are not strong enough. So we, this is a closed cell foam, which is more stronger. It is having higher strength to weight ratio. So this, is, this will impart more structural integrity to whatever structure we are making. Right. So like this is a team that is actually working on microgravity for this. And to give a kind of more expansion, this is actually a kind of a combination of zinc and, and titanium hydride. hydrox, hydride. 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 And 100 is to one ratio. is to one ratio. But what happens is that, what you see here is a small pellet, and this is quite heavy. And the same technique that what you're using here is baking. So what happens is that when it's being like a, when you heat it, this actual titanium hydride, it actually oxy hydrogen gets released, and that release actually expands this. Right now, they are only trying to do it in one axis, that is the Z axis, and that's why you see it in this kind of uh, form. It still can expand to a larger level, but it, it's a very important experiment and they have quite succeeded on it using microgravity, right, on this also. And this is, these are the capsules that you see over here, exemplary work done by this particular team. This, the claim that's being used for welding as well because in space, the way everything works entirely differently. For example, heat, a beat of flame, they completely work differently. So to actually get the results and everything, they are using such components. This is the one that goes inside capsule and uh, then default will occur. But very interesting aspect is that, I think this also has a 3D printer inside, right? So they also have a 3D printer inside. So extremely advanced technology is also being used, but this is for making space. For space, what is the component of making space for Earth? Uh, for example, we have uh, optical fibers. So uh, the, the ordinary internet optical fibers are called uh, silica fibers, whatever we have. So there are also next generation optical fibers called uh, Zeblon optical fibers. So uh, this kind of uh, Zeblon optical fibers, so once uh, they are made in uh, normal uh, uh, normal gravity condition, right? what happens is they form impurities. So these impurities will deteriorate its quality. Uh, the same Zeblon optical fiber, when it is uh, made in microgravity condition, they, they are better. So there's no crystal formation there. So hence, uh, the quality of uh, optical fiber improves there. The another example what I can give is like um, bioprinting. Suppose if I want to uh, print very minute uh, capillaries of heart and other things here, because of the gravity, right, the weight, it starts collapsing here in the uh, normal gravity condition. Although we have uh, all this uh, scaffold and other things, still it collapses. But the same thing can be done perfectly in microgravity. Uh, using the uh, microgravity conditions, uh, we can print even very minute uh, arteries and also capillaries. Yeah. But wouldn't it be like, too costly for us to take these raw materials to space and then do it and come back? How, how are we going to cope up with that? Uh, for example, these things are, uh, uh, for example, the optical fiber, what I said, right? So we can't use it for uh, like household application or other things. What, so there's uh, extra cost involved in it. So what we can do is we can uh, use this for strategic applications, for defense or medical applications. So like that we can use it, uh, this kind of uh, Zeblon optical fiber, which falls m mainly in uh, mid-range, mid-IR range. Mid -range. Yeah. 
is the cost of taking this raw material to space is it actually decreasing yeah uh, earlier it was like uh, for, uh, say like uh, 10000 uh, dollars per kg uh, uh, now uh, we are talking somewhere from uh, 2000 to 3000 dollars per kg uh, it is expected to even uh, decrease uh, like let's say like 100 dollars in the future so if that is the case then we can expect uh, more uh, logistics happening here so like uh, so on one side, like I said earlier, musky giants are actually claiming that they are going to take people over there. A lot of experiments are being done. You can see rockets actually taking a lot of payload and such to the destination. But what is going to happen when we go there and reach the spot? What we have to do is sustenance, construction, providing shelter, and also creating equipments, be it 3D printing or such. And this is the team very quietly working and achieving quietly but in a great manner using microgravity with the kind of like 2.5 seconds they have they have achieved this much and they are still staying fast to create more for sustenance on earth for earth and for space with daniel pramod madhav for today